So, Munster Stormers, uh, a replay of the URC final last year. Uh, one for the purists, and luckily for you, I'm a purist. <laughs> uh, this is the other game that I watched in, a, in great detail this weekend. Um, hell of an arm wrestle, to be honest with you. Uh, a real arm wrestle in the middle of uh, in the middle of Munster in Limerick, I believe they play. I could get that wrong, and I could get absolutely blindsided by the fans. Doesn't matter. What did I think of this game? I think the Stormers did a hell of a good job considering they still don't have any of their World Cup winners back in their team. I'll start with that. Uh, Munster, they looked good and they won the game. However, I guess I'm not as harsh on the Stormers on this side of things because of what I've just said. But with Munster, I'm a little bit concerned about their attacking prowess, their ability to score points. And... This all could just be just because of the weather, right? It was absolutely pissing it down for the majority of the game. Very difficult to be a, a superstar club that's throwing the ball around like crazy. But uh, I don't know. I feel like there's something missing from Munster's attack. I think their pack's good. Strong. I like the fly half. I like Jack Crowley. I'm going to actually be doing a video on what's the future of Ireland's fly halves, I think, in the future. And I think he's definitely in the mix of the conversation. Young guy, shows a lot of potential. But I really think they miss something, some player that can from in the backs that can crash through the middle of the park, that can set up their forward pack. Now, I see a lot of parallels between Munster's rugby and Leicester's rugby, not Leinster, Leicester, Leicester Tigers. Uh, and basically, you're gonna you trust a pack to uh, win you some turnover balls, slow the opposition ball down, and you're gonna rely on them to uh, make some gains over the gain line. But to do that and allow your backs on the outside to have more space, You feel I feel like you need a central point or a central focus point of your attack that can do crash balls down the middle. Um, for Leicester, they have Kata. They used to have Tuolangi. Uh, they used to have Alessana Tuolangi that would be able to crash in through the middle. Someone that would just get over the game line and allow the forwards to maybe pick and go or do a, a crash ball to suck in defenders after you've gotten over the game line. And I feel like that's what Munster misses. They don't have... Uh, Robbie Henshaw or Bundiaki. They don't have... Uh, think of some other crashing over players. Kata was one I've already mentioned that's playing for Leicester. They don't have Nick Tompkins who played for Saracens. They don't have this uh, centre or winger that can come in on the centre line to be able to get over the game line for them. And I feel like this is the missing Jenga piece really for, uh, for Munster in general in terms of their attack. I don't know when they can stop signing players, if there's a deadline, that's a lack of knowledge on my part, so I apologise. But I really feel like what they need is to invest in somebody like that. And that could be like, as I said, like a Jenga piece that can change their attack from being pedestrian to really, really dangerous. I think it's something they really need to heavily, heavily invest in, whether they, they think there's somebody in their academy that they can bring in less likely, or there's somebody that they can kind of buy on a cheap, probably a little bit more likely, right? Uh, I think you would see the similar effect that you have for Esther Hazen, for Marcus Smith in the Premiership at Harlequins, where um, for a, a younger and also, uh, let's be honest, a bit more slight of a fly half, he has a safety valve option that he can, he can have to always go like, okay, things are breaking down, there's nothing on the outside, there's nothing for me, uh, give it to the big guy, we're at least going to go over the game line and that's going to create some space for us. Uh, I really feel like Munster need that uh, and I can't six, express that enough that if I was in some kind of senior position at Munster at the moment this is what I'm going to be looking kind of to the very last moment of the uh, transfer window whatever we have in, in the URC again apologies that I don't know what this is maybe it's already been and gone and Munster is stuck with what they've got so uh, and maybe they have someone that's been rested I don't know I'm not I'm not a huge knowledge I don't know the URC a lot I'm, I'm loving what I'm watching so far um, but yeah, I, I feel like that's what's missing from Munster. On the Stormers' side, their attack was inept for other reasons, because I think they didn't have Manny Libok, they didn't have Williamson, uh, they showed signs of life, but it was always met with like a knock-on or a mistake. There was one player on their team, though, that I really like the look of, uh, and that is Evan Cruz, the number eight, always got over the game line, made the first tackle a miss most of the occasions he took the ball in hand. Uh, 
And yeah, I whew, they they have something there in their number eight, and I, I'll be excited for them once uh, once they get their starters back. Specifically for me, as a Leicester fan, it's the first team that we have in in the uh, Investic Champions Cup, which I think is what it's called this year. Uh, so I, I, I'm hoping they get it together a little bit um, and that they get their their starters back sooner rather than later, because at the moment they they look like they're missing a lot of pieces, and it's obvious why. So that's that. Uh, I did see one occasion that I thought was quite funny to mention. Um, Munster kept going for the corner and <laughs> the three for the Stormers got a yellow because he basically did a dirty dancing move of Pio Mani in the air while he came down, um, which I thought was quite funny to mention. Um, but yeah, that's that's the main note I kind of got from this game. I don't think we need to go into too much detail. There's not a lot to say uh, with a game that was like this. Wet, muddy, um, you know, it, it changes the game style a lot and what's available to the players. But uh, there were some notable things, I think, in that regard for both Munster and the Stormers for things that you can hope for in the future for both of them. But that's it for me in this game.